sometimes. Okay, we have almost finished the proof of the Riemann mapping theorem. Right? The whole point of what we did with Montel's theorem was to basically allow us to say that if we have a set of holomorphic functions with certain nice properties, we can pick off a maximal element in the set. And it's going to be the function that will have largest derivative at zero and absolute value. So step one, recall, we showed that we could map our region one-to-one -one inside the unit disk. And then we could apply a map if we wanted to, and we could then say zero is now inside our region. Step two was we looked at all maps from that region inside the disk to the disk, and we picked the one that had the largest derivative at the origin. There was one fact we really needed that we haven't proved yet, is we need that, you know, certain functions are one-to-one, -one. right? And so we wanted uh, that a certain convergence happens and becomes one-to-one. -one. So let me just, you know, state the last result. So let me, we have a sequence of holomorphic functions on open, or oh, that's probably written open, on an open, simply, connected omega, it converges uniformly on compacta, limit is either constant or one to one. Well, and I should say that the initial functions are also one to one. Give me a counterexample if my initial set of functions do not have to be one to one. So imagine I don't put in one to one. I want a sequence of holomorphic functions that converge uniformly on compactor, and their limit is neither constant nor one to one. Z squared. Yes. Right. So you've already earned a number now. <laughs> How many have you taken so far? One. Okay, so you're now death free. Okay. Z squared. <laughs> you can stop. you can help the lead get back up to being neutral. Fn of z is z squared. Does this converge uniformly on compactor? The convergence for this function, right? If every function in my sequence is the same. The convergence is pretty easy to get. Okay? Can you give me an example of one-to-one -one functions that converge and the limit is constant? So here, um, limit is not one-to-one. -one. Limit is constant. So, Philippe, since you took so many M&Ms, you know on I'm on the spot. You're on the spot. Oh, no. Give me a good constant number. Any constant number. One. One, okay. <laughs> I would have chosen something other than one, but you can do one. Okay. What's an easier constant number? Zero. Zero. Can you give me a sequence of functions, you know, that have independence that converge to zero? Well, one over z has that has oh, no, no independence. I guess, yeah, yeah. Z, to, z to the n on zero one. So z to the n on zero one. But what if I'm not on zero one? Z over n. I'm sorry. Z over n. That's not what you said, was it? <laughs> <laughs> Are you Canadian or British? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And that's acceptable. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> z. 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 I, uh, Williams does not protect, I think, people saying Z over Z. That's not a protected category. <laughs> <laughs> so, Z over N. That's probably the easiest example to come up with. You know, it's clearly going to be defined. It's all morphic everywhere it's defined. And it will converge uniformly to zero. So it's possible that our convergence in the end could be to a constant function. So, 
when we look at this lemma, there's no way we can avoid having you know, constant as one of the possible outcomes. So the question is, what do we need in order for it not to be constant? So if we have <clears throat> two different values that are hit, then we're okay. Then it would have to be one to one. Okay. So the question is now, how do we prove this result? So proof. Assume the limit is not constant. Because if the limit is constant, it's pretty easy to show that the limit is either constant or one to one. So what does it mean if the limit is not constant? <coughs> What can we deduce from this? Not necessarily. I mean, I could give you, um, you know, just the function f n of z is z, and that has no independence. So if, it's not a really surprising consequence. But if I tell you that it's not constant, what do you know? So it hits multiple points. So essentially, that's all we know right now is it hits multiple points. So the whole question is, we want to show that it's one to one. So one way to go is to go by contradiction. Assume it isn't one to one. So let's let uh, f equal the limit as n goes to infinity of f n. There exists z1 and z2 such that f of z1 equals f of z2. Right? If it's not one to one, I have to have two points that get sent to the same thing. So now let's study gn of z is fn of z minus f of z1. So what do we know about this function? It has two roots. Why does it have two roots? Is it z, z1 that out? Oh. Right, because here I have an f sub n, and here I just have an m. It doesn't necessarily have two roots. So can there be two different values of z that are sent to the same thing under gn? Well, if two z's went to the same thing, then I would have two fn I would have fn of, say, w and fn of w prime going to the same thing. Because they're just different by subtraction. So since fn is 1 to 1 and this is a constant, this is also 1 to 1. gn is 1 to 1. Now what's the limit as n goes to infinity of gn? So the limit as n goes to infinity of gn of z is what? Of z. f of z, z minus f of z one is that no, function z. is that function one to one? No, because no. that will be zero. Right, not one to one. Z one and z two are both sent to zero. So what we want to do is we want to somehow deduce a contradiction from this. That we have a sequence of functions that only have one zero. What's the only point that's a zero for gn? GN. Yeah, where's the only place gn is zero? Oh, actually, we don't know. I guess looking at this, we don't, we don't necessarily even know that it's zero at some point. But we do know that in the limit, uh, there will be a zero. So unfortunately, if I want to try to get a contradiction, here I have two zeros. I might not have any zeros there. And if there's a zero, I have no idea where it is. So I'm trying to find, do we have pink chalk? Yes. Specifically pink. But I really want to emphasize something today. So these might not be the right functions to look at. Because the problem is I don't know where the zero of gn of z is. Where do you want the zero to be? 
called z1. I like this as the limit, because this is a limit that has two zeros. How can I fix the definition of gn? Giving it fn of z1? fn of z1. I think this is the first time all year we've used you know, a second color. Second color, whatever it is. <laughs> yes, it has to be a red one or a pink one. So now, gn is 1 to 1, and it's 0 at z1. So the question is always, why do we choose what we choose? Why do we choose to make things where they are? How do we know it's 1 to 1? Oh, because each fn, is, each fn is 1 to 1. And so since we're just subtracting off a constant, we keep the one-to-oneness. And so the advantage here is now we know where gn vanishes, only at z1. And so if you look at what's going on, here's z1, here's z2. We know gn is always zero here. We know g is always zero here. So gn and g are 0 here. And we know g is 0 here. Could g have additional zeros? It's possible. What if the what if f is 0? So again, we don't know that much about the limit function. Is it possible that g could have additional zeros? Yes. So maybe there are some additional zeros of g. Could I have infinitely many zeros of g? Maybe the zeros of g are marching off like this. But there is something I know can't happen. I can't have an accumulation point. So why can't the zeros of g accumulate? Because then f would be constant. Because then f would be constant. So no accumulation of g zeros. G's zeros do not accumulate. As f is not constant. So again, whenever you're doing a problem, somehow the condition should come into the proof. Where are we using the fact that f is not constant? This is where we're using it. We're using it in the fact that the zeros of g cannot accumulate. All right, so what does it mean if they don't accumulate? It means I can draw a small disk, a small ball about z2, and there'll be no zeros of g inside. 